Hi, my name is Lina and happy holidays. I'm just going to quickly today put together a uh, favorite art supplies of 2018. So let's just get into what my favorites has been this year. I just want to say that not everything is going to be actually art supplies. Some of, some things are going to be things that I just think are very handy when you do art or it just like comes in very handy while I do art at least. But most of the stuff that I'm going to show is art supplies. So I'm starting off with the non-art stuff first, just to get them out of the way. So, well, it is very art related, but... It is not an art supply. Uh, this is my swatch book for all my Mijello Mission Gold and Holbein watercolors. So I've made individual sheets for every one of them. Um, I'll show you. Just I put them in like this. It's just uh, some um, not very not very expensive. Uh, watercolor paper and I've wrote, written everything down that I need to know like uh, pigment numbers, what brand of paint it is, the name, uh, light fastness and um, the opacity and also in this case you actually see that I have this uh, triangle um, which is staining uh, but I only have staining um, information from my Magello paints, so my Holbein's I don't know, but that doesn't matter. So it's just a very very colorful book or pamphlet of uh, swatches and I love it. Um, I really think I should use it more <laughs> because usually I just take out my palettes and use the paints without thinking much, but if I want my paintings to be light fast, I think I really should be using this more. So, but uh, this was so <laughs> a very, very big job to put this together. So I'm very happy that I did it and I'm so happy with it. And also I have lots of more sheets. Next thing that has really been good for me this year um, is also not an art supply at all. It is my bullet journal. Uh, I started it in November, actually in the middle of November, I think. Yeah. Um, and it has been so good for me, uh, productivity wise. Um, I don't really want to show everything, but I just, it is a very simple spread. It is in half Norwegian. <laughs> um, and I just put in like a thing for every uh, day of the week. So I take one week at a time. And as you can see for the last week, I, I make these uh, uh, to do's every day. And um, it really, keeps me uh, focused and helps me do what I should do. So it is really, really helpful. I'm so happy that I started with this again. I had a bullet journal earlier um, that I think is half full, uh, yeah. But the thing is that in the beginning I was very, very into it, um, doing like all kinds of stuff and <laughs> was very good at uh, decorating it. But then at the end, I was like so sick of setting up these huge things all the time. So I ended up just using it for scribbles and just being very uncareful with it. So um, I scrapped this. I think it is. it has to be a while ago too. Uh, yeah, back in February I stopped using a bullet journal and then I found this cute one and I just wanted to try again and it has been really successful. 
um, and I'm going to keep doing it the next year, but I'm going to keep it to these simple, simple layouts, uh, not like that it has to be so, like this, uh, a, this was a habit tracker. I hated doing it. It was so pretty and so satisfying to look at, but I just, uh, it took so much time, so much energy, like a sleep uh, tracker also. Uh, and it looks so cool, but I, I just, I don't want to put all my energy into setting up my bullet journal. So I'm keeping it easy. I'm probably going to keep using the other one when this one is finished, but uh, yeah, bullet journaling is great for me. <laughs> the next thing that is not an art supply, but I, I use a lot when I do art, is this scotch magic tape. Uh, no, scotch removable tape, sorry. Um, I got this idea uh, from Bailey J. She showed that she used this in one of her What Art Supplies I Use videos, I think. It is a long while ago since I watched it. But I found a pack of two on eBay and I've been using them all year. Especially when I'm drawing on um, Bristol paper, it is so good for taping it down when I um, trace my own sketches over to a uh, for a finished piece. Um, uh, this tape is really good because it is so non-sticky, but at, at the same time it's sticky enough. So when you tape it down, you can just easily remove it without any tearing. Uh, I have experienced a couple of tearings, but that was on regular printer paper, so it wasn't anything uh, dangerous <laughs> to uh, rip. But yeah, uh, I really, really like this tape. So good for using with uh, Bristol paper for like marker paper to hold it down when you're drawing or up to the window if you're tracing something that way. Really good. I could really recommend this. So now over to a couple of a little boring art supplies. Um, I love this metallic uh, ruler. It is 50 centimeters. Um, I, I don't know what that is in inches but it is very good. Um, it is perfect for measuring things on big papers and making straight lines and I love that it is in metal because then it's more sturdy and it doesn't get any uh, big um, dents and stuff like that. So this is, this is one of my favorite rulers and also it has a hole for hanging. Then over to a <laughs> really really small and maybe boring thing, but I found this, uh, is this a compass? I don't really know what it's called. Um, I think it is a compass. It's like one of those, it has a sharp thing here, so you put it down in paper and you can make a circle. And it is so handy because um, of this thing. So there was a pencil that followed it. It is kind of like hard to get out and in, so it keeps its place when I turn it. And also it has has a screw here so I can uh, tighten it if it loosens up over time. Um, but yeah, this is genius because it has a pencil now. I usually use the pencil first when I'm sketching, if I want a perfect circle somewhere. Uh, because I can't draw circles for shit, <laughs> so this is really genius. And uh, one thing that is actually really cool is that I can just turn this and take the pencil out. And for example, put this Copic Multiliner in it and just adjust it. Now it stays put. And then I can use that and it's so genius. Um, I've used this a lot, especially in my Inktober drawings this year. Uh, it came in very handy 
like a normal compass wouldn't really interest me that much because I could only use a pencil but this can use other stuff so that is so genius um, it is not big enough to fit a sharpie or anything like that but it's a tiny bit bigger than a Copic Multiliner so genius uh, over to more art supplies as I just showed you my Copic Multiliner this these are some pens that I've used a lot this year. Um, my most used liners in general are the black multiliners. Uh, the 0 0.3 and the 0 0.1 are the ones I use most. And also I love this uh, Copic uh, Gas & Fuda nylon brush pen. It is really, really... Um, it comes to a very sharp point. And I used it lots during Inktober. I just love brush pens. I feel like I haven't mastered them at all, but I really want to get better at it and I just enjoy it very much. Next up in the pen world is um, the Uniball Signo white gel pens, as a lot of people are raving about them. I have two kinds, uh, the Broad, and the, uh, I think this is called angelic, yes, angelic color. Um, so I can't see it anywhere, but they are definitely different. I see it very well when I'm drawing with them. So I'm really happy that I have two different sizes. Uh, I found them both on eBay and uh, I just, I use, I use them a lot, uh, both in watercolor paintings and in marker drawings. Next up, uh, over favorites this year has been this uh, Luminance, Caran d'Ache Luminance uh, colored pencil in white. It is the only Caran d'Ache pencil that I have. But I really, really like it. Uh, it's very soft uh, compared to my uh, Faber Castell Polychromos pencils, and it is also quite opaque. So I usually use this for highlights in my watercolor paintings. For example, the last one I posted here, um, I used it for the eyelids, for brightening the nose, uh, and stuff like that. Uh, and I really like it. It's expensive though. <laughs> Next up is a couple of sharpeners that I've really enjoyed this year. Uh, I actually very recently got this one. Uh, it is the Kum uh, Automatic Long, long Point um, Pencil Sharpener. And uh, I don't know what the automatic stands for, but it is a like you sharpen it yourself, you know. Um, it is very good for a long point on a pencil. Um, so I use it a lot for my polychromos. So what is very handy with this one is that you actually first sharpen it in one of the holes and then there you kind of shave away the wood and then you put it in the other one and then you sharpen the lead itself. Um, so it's a two point uh, two step process it's really nice I really recommend it but uh, for a more efficient uh, almost I would say uh, one step process I use this this is my Derwent uh, it doesn't say on it but I'm gonna find it and put it on the screen a Derwent long point sharpener too. One of the, I think it's called a helix uh, sharpener, um, where you put the pencil in, in the front here and sharpen it by using this. Uh, I really, really love this one too. Uh, gives great long points. It doesn't give as sharp of a point as the Kum, 
uh, sharpener, but I really, really love this one also. And as I just showed very quickly, uh, this one I've recently uh, fallen in love with. I haven't used them much, so they don't show really a sign of have, having been used almost at all. Uh, but uh, for sketching, for figure drawing and stuff like that, I really love to use these because I can make different shades of uh, graphite. For learning values and uh, practicing that, these are really good. I really like them. My favorite ink this year has been this Deleter Black 4 ink. Um, I was searching around <clears throat> on Google to find a ink, an ink that was both Copic and waterproof. And this one was that, so I had to like buy it and try it. And it is true, it is both Copic and waterproof and uh, also it's a very black ink, so I'm really happy with this. Used it a lot during Inktober. Next is my go-to art supplies for like drawing uh, just in general. Um, because I'm not always in my art room and then I want to take some art supplies with me. And I've showed this earlier, I think. I really think I did that. I don't actually remember. But this is just a little set of the most essential things that I like to use um, compre compressed into a cute, very, very cute uh, pencil case. So here are the um, Faber-Castell Albrecht Dürer watercolor pencils, which I totally love. Um, I just bought them earlier this fall and uh, I haven't used them a ton but from what I've used them I find them so beautiful. They are a lot softer than the polychromos and they are water soluble so you can use them both as a regular pencil but also as a watercolor so I really love them for the versatility and in here I just have a a sharpener, a extremely tiny eraser, <laughs> and a four-colored uh, ballpoint pen that I just like to use for sketching, a normal HB pencil from Faber-Castell, uh, some Unipin uh, liner pencils, a water brush, uh, one of these fun fancy uh, four colored colored pencils that I'm not really sure how to use and also just a little homemade sketchbook that I just love playing around with with different kinds of papers in it. So This is probably gonna be filled quite quickly. I think but yeah, this is my go-to everyday art supplies, I guess As For a favorite palette this year it is the Magello Double Decker palette. <clears throat> I see that this video is getting quite long, so I'm gonna try to be quicker. But yeah, um, this is my favorite palette this year. It is huge. Um, it is awesome. It has 72 wells, I believe. Um, and this is where I store my Magello Mission White paints. So this is what I mean by double decker because you have two layers and here are what it looks like on the inside. It has a quite a big mixing space here and also you can just take that out and you have a huge mixing space down here. Um, the wells are big and deep enough to Fill them with quite a lot of water when you're working and also a lot of paint. So uh, I just really, really love this. It is my favorite, all-time favorite palette from Mijello this far. I haven't tried their 55 Well uh, Studio palette yet. I really want to try that one. And also the Silver Nano palette. really want to try that one too. But for now... <clears throat> 
this is a huge favorite. And also, <laughs> Uh, I should mention that the colors inside, like the Mijello Mission White, I have been using them a lot this year. Um, there's big variations in uh, light fastness and stuff, so I wouldn't recommend them for like maybe making finished pieces that are gonna last for years and years. I would maybe do some more research on that before I could say anything but I really really love those paints it is so fun to paint with them it's like wash but uh, really easily rewettable so now we're on to my two last things which are favorite papers and I just have to add the arches uh, cold press watercolor paper to this list because I tried this for the first time of my life this year and it is a joy to paint on compared to other watercolor papers that I've tried. So uh, it is 100% cotton. Uh, I would really recommend if you haven't tried it, even if it is a little expensive compared to other papers, I would really recommend trying it to see if you like it because it is a totally other experience to paint on compared to like cellulo cellulose paper and other papers. And lastly, this is uh, the Canson Media... Canson... Oh! The Canson Mixed Media Imagine paper. So this is a big A3 pad. Um, 200 GSM or uh, 120 pounds. Um, it is a mixed media paper. It is very smooth, very uh, white. Um, and I just really enjoyed this for making sketchbooks. So this, for example, is one of the sketchbooks that I've made with it. Um, and I use watercolor in it, you can use gouache, you can use colored pencils, watercolor pencils, um, ink, graphite, uh, just just about everything. I haven't tried it with um, acrylics or, for example, tried to use gesso and oils on it, but I would believe that that would work too. Um, and I'm not using this paper like, uh, I haven't tried using this paper for a finished piece of watercolor paint, for example, because uh, in my experience it is, it isn't good as a kind of, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use it as a watercolor paper only, um, not for finished pieces, because uh, it is not extremely good for layering or glazing and stuff like that but for uh, for me making sketchbooks with it it is genius um, I think I've I think I've made three or four sketchbooks already with this paper and there's still like half of the paper left um, it is 50 sheets and I think it was um, I don't remember the price, but I'm gonna find it and put it on the screen. But I, I thought it was very cheap and you get a lot of paper for not that big of a price. So yeah, that's something that I'm really happy with this year. So I hope that you enjoy this video and that I'll see you when the new year comes. And I'm so looking forward to 2019. I think it's going to be a great year for art. I'll see you then. And have a great New Year's Eve, everyone. Um, I really hope that this has been a good year for every one of you. And if not, then let's just make the new one better, shall we? Bye!